So I just answered a viewer question that was about animations and how they work and the cost of animations. Uh, and in response to that, average Twitch user said, when I hear about animating, I think of the traditional sense, like hand animating something. But how do you all use mocap? I remember seeing some actors using mocap to make a zombie eating animation. So how come y'all couldn't use mocap more? Uh, thinking that maybe, you know, if we use mocap, uh, that could let us create more animations more quickly um, and get them into the game. So uh, I think one of the misconceptions that people have about mocap is the idea and by the way i am not an animator i'm probably going to get aspects of this wrong especially in the details but i'll tell you how i understand it as a designer who is near animators and hears them talking about it um the advantage of mocap is not that it just gets you a bunch of animations very quickly into the game because each mocap animation that you sort of record uh from a performer uh, it comes in with a lot of garbage and a lot of like noise that an animator has to you know, they have to basically go through and refine that entire animation to make it usable. Not only to sort of clean up the, the kind of garbage data that you get with something that's recorded from the real world, but also to like chop it up. Like when you, you know, when you have a reload animation, for instance, it's not just a single animation of a character reloading a gun. It's broken up into different phases so that different parts of it can happen at different speeds or can be adjusted to respond to different weapons or whatever. There's like a lot of different situations they would need to be adapted to. And so, uh, you know... Uh, in video games, an animation is never as simple as just, here's an animation, unless it's part of a cutscene. It's usually like this uh, almost Frankenstein of a lot of different tiny animations that are working together to make a behavior. And so doing mocap is a great way to, to sort of get a starting point for animations, but there's still a lot of work that goes into making those animations usable in the game. Uh, and so it's, it, it doesn't really solve sort of the time and resource problem of, uh, of sort of creating a, a feature that's, got, that's dependent on a lot of different animations. One of the things that mocap is really good for, though, is getting really naturalistic animations. Um, because there's a lot of little tiny subtle details in a way that a person moves that you don't think about when you're doing it and you don't think about when you're observing it, but it really matters to making somebody look human. And the thing that mocap is great about is that it gets, it captures all of that stuff and a lot of extra garbage that you don't need, but it captures a lot of that stuff. And so if you start from mocap, it is possible to make animations, uh, you know, with with you know less tweaking and fine tuning, get some animations that have a real naturalistic flair to them. Um, that's more difficult to get if you're just starting from absolute scratch from a character in T pose and moving their arms and legs around. It would take a lot of time to try to work all of that nuance in. Whereas if you're starting with mocap animation, you know that 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 nuance can already be there, and you just have to your your job is to preserve it and accentuate it rather than trying to create it from nothing. So there are advantages to mocap that they can really make, you know, if you're going for really naturalistic animations, you can get there faster having used mocap, but just getting animations at all. Uh, mocap helps a little, but it doesn't, it isn't the silver bullet that I think a lot of people imagine that it is. Um, but there are other techniques you can also use that are not mocap. Like, for instance, uh, the animation, like when a character succumbs to blood plague and they writhe around on the floor and they trans transition directly into a zombie from being a human, uh, that animation actually was done from reference. Uh, uh, Ian, one of our animators, uh, found reference of, uh, of somebody who was going through some kind of really bad time uh, and they were writhing on the ground and freaking out. And he actually took video of that and he, and he, he like set it up in, 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 I think it was Maya where he was animating and he set it up in the background and he basically synced a skeleton to that animation, to, to that behavior that that person had to create an animation of somebody writhing around and freaking out on the ground. And that person was actually moving around in the scene a lot and he eliminated all of that moving around so the person could do it like lying down on a bed in an infirmary, for instance. Um, so he had to make a lot of changes to it. He didn't just directly imitate that animation, but he was able to get a lot of those interesting nuances of human behavior by starting with reference and then adapting that reference to be the thing that the game actually needed, which was someone in place on a gurney or, or whatever, or on a, on a cot ter transitioning into a zombie. Um, and so, so, you know, so using reference is a good thing. And also just, you know, I think once an animator has gotten a certain amount of experience, there's certain things that they know what it looks like and they can, and they can make it happen at least initially, you know, with, with, without necessarily a lot of that stuff. But most of the animators that I know, the really good animators, they, you know, they, they don't have some like ego trip where they have to prove that they can make an animation from scratch. They're, you know, they, they oftentimes get really excited when they see a video of somebody doing something in a way that they haven't really seen it done before. They'll get really excited. Like, Ooh, I haven't seen that before. Let me grab that and they'll try to make an animation out of it and they'll sort of like be building up this like repertoire of like 
all these weird, interesting ways that people can move that they've learned and that they've practiced uh, so they can work them, you know, eventually find a place to stick that into a game. <laughs> so Radith Cord says, are you telling us you had to execute someone in order to get that euthanized survivor animation correct? Uh, I think I'm saying the opposite, is that we did not need to use mocap in order to get something like that. <laughs> So, Le Coalition is saying, uh, I know why you're really doing these viewer questions. It's to avoid fighting a plague heart. You might be right. Maybe I should just move on. <sighs> Let's go kill a plague heart. 